radical dissenter, where intellectuals took it upon themselves to probe myths, interrogate institutional prerogative, and disturb the complacency of power, was effectively suspended in favor of supporting the American proposition. Endorsed and subsidized by powerful institutions, this non-communist group became as much a cartel in the intellectual life of the West as communism had been a few years earlier, and it included many of the same people. There came a time when apparently life lost the ability to arrange itself, says Charlie Citrine, the narrator of Saul Bellow's Humboldt's Gift. It had to be arranged. Intellectuals took this as their job. From, say, Machiavelli's time to our own, this arranging has been the one great, gorgeous, tantalizing, misleading, disastrous project. A man like Humboldt, inspired, shrewd, nutty, was brimming over with the discovery that the human enterprise, so grand and infinitely varied, had now to be managed by exceptional persons. He was an exceptional person, therefore he was an eligible candidate for power. Well, why not? Like so many Humboldts, those intellectuals who had been betrayed by the false idol of communism now found themselves gazing at the possibility of building a new Weimar, an American Weimar. If the government and its covert action arm, the CIA, was prepared to assist in this project, well, why not? That former left-wingers should have come to be roped together in the same enterprise as the CIA is less implausible than it seems. At least to Europeans, um, I think maybe Americans are much more familiar with this kind of paradox. There was a genuine community of interest and conviction between the agency and those intellectuals who were hired, even if they didn't know it, to fight the Cold War. The CIA's, the CIA's influence was not always or often reactionary or sinister, wrote Arthur Schlesinger Jr. In my experience, its leadership was politically enlightened and sophisticated. This view of the CIA as a haven of liberalism acted as a powerful inducement to collaborate with it, or if not this, at least to acquiesce to the myth that it was well motivated. And yet this perception sits uncomfortably with the CIA's reputation as a ruthlessly interventionist and unaccountable instrument of American power. This was, after all, the same organization. Reminding people of a flawed by illustrating in great detail a perception towards judgments counter by involving moral fixtures as Hitler's indignation. When confronting America's indifference to genocide, tolerance is not a quality certainly agrees racism could be taught better in school. 3A love letter proposals are meant to be polite I don't think there will ever come up. Day there are a million reasons to sit on you that doesn't mean they have to be. But I'm what you get alive to I'm book the news. in the end of the latter. National Committee for a Free Europe. Crusade for Freedom. Free Asia Committee. Free Europe University. Radio Free This, Radio Free That, uh, people that I Congress spoke to called for freedom. The jokey mantra inside the agency was, was to call it the far-fetched foundation. In the mid-1960s, the joke was that if any American philanthropic or cultural organization carried the words free or private in its literature, it must be a CIA Clearly, fund. however, by camouflaging its investment, the CIA acted on the supposition that its blandishments would be refused if, opened off, if offered openly. Even the Farfield Foundation, many CIA... Stephen Spender later thought it would be amusing to write a funny Gogol-like story about a man who, whatever he did, and whoever his employer, found he was always being paid for by the CIA. Do you think CIA? I would have gone on the encounter payroll in 1956 had I known that there was secret U.S. government money behind it? Dwight MacDonald angrily asked the man. CIA, as, as it turns out, pretty much everybody would put him on the payroll. Behind it. Free to represent me as my plug of indifference business partner. Sincerely. Trust, life, fear, death, Jesus is cool finance, but the devil cannot forgive you because God, God but he yeah. Charges are listed below. Cultural integrity, unfinished numerical. Name. If you do, we are really out of contact. One would hesitate to work even for an openly government funded magazine. I think I've you been played know. for a sucker. What kind of freedom can be advanced by these deceptions? It was Harry Truman, under whose presidency the CIA was established, 
who before his death said, secrecy and a free democratic government don't mix. Freedom of any kind certainly wasn't on the agenda in the Soviet Union, where those writers and intellectuals who were not sent to the gulags were lassoed into serving the interests of the state. And it's state. right to oppose unfreedom, but I also ask the question, well, in direction of whether the Soviet and across the pages of its learned reviews, its members acquired an audience for their views which no other organization, except perhaps the Moscow Common Form, could deliver. Richard Helms, Deputy Director for Plans, immediately appointed a special assistant to pull together information on ramparts, including any evidence of subversion, and to devise proposals for counter action. By May, Helms was feeding the White House with the inside dope on ramparts. Much of the information of the campaign to smear the magazine reduced its maturing through agency records. Additional dirt was supplied by the FBI. Helms, who was convinced that Ramparts was being as used as a vehicle by the Soviets, ordered a full investigation of its financing, but failed to turn up any evidence After of foreign involvement. After reading through the Ramparts file, presidential assistant Peter Jessup penned a memo with a memorable subject line, a right cross to the left temple, which read, In view of Ramparts' dedication to smearing the administration and the murky background of its sponsorship, one might think that some agency of the government would be pursuing the threads involved later. Here. The magazine Human Events ran a smear under the title The Inside Story of Ramparts Magazine. Snoops, eccentrics, ventriloquists, and bearded new leftnecks who had a get out of Signed out by of one M.M. M. Morton, quote, the pen name of an expert on internal security affairs, unquote. the article bore all the hallmarks of a As CIA did a news plant. weekly piece of the same week, Who Really Manned the Ramparts, and an article in the Washington Star, both of which announced serious doubts about the bona fides of Ramparts which was described as not only a muckraker, but a muckraker with a malevolent motive. The CIA did everything it could to sink ramparts. Quote, I had all sorts of dirty tricks to hurt their circulation and finance, Deputy Inspector General Edgar Applewhite later confessed. The people running ramparts were vulnerable to blackmail, he said. We had awful things in mind, some of which we carried off. We were not in the least inhibited by the fact that the CIA had no internal security role in the United States.